In between podcasts, I'm your host Joe Scorn. and I'm joined here by Tony Tones at RT. How are you, Tony? Hello, I'm doing well on this spring day. Spring it's not day, Sunday again. Oh yeah, um, this this fine day that is not of the <laughs> sun. It was pretty sunny, and then it got very not sunny. Um, as yeah. is England, it started raining again. It was then very windy. Uh, this week, um, we're going to be talking about April Fools. There's no news. Gotcha. Uh, April Fools is going to be a large section of the podcast because we'll yeah. be talking about uh, a lot of that. I I don't know if you know this, but it seems like Asia does way more April Fool stuff than anywhere else in the world. Like I've seen so much Japanese I, devs doing April Fool stuff compared to like a lot of Western devs right. not doing as much. I don't know if there's like a I culture like, thing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like there's in some ways been yeah less than people that i like follow apart from one big one that we're gonna talk about um yeah, yeah i i'm not i've not seen too much of like, I've, I've seen little bits but yeah i i maybe that's the way we're going maybe we're too serious over here um, so literally just before we recorded this while i was eating dinner there was the triple i indie festival and i was like oh holy shit there's some really good stuff here but I've watched like five minutes of it because I don't have time to go through it. Um, so if we have extra time at the end of the podcast, we'll go through it and we'll probably just um, watch the trailers together and just react to it. But if we run out of time, we'll just do it on the next podcast because it's only like well, like a week and a half at max away, right, until the next podcast. So save that big juicy content for the next one, you know? Yeah. yeah. So Tony, oh, I've been gonna... playing... So oh, I... gone. I was gonna go tangerine slightly here. I just realized I haven't so I haven't resubscribed to you. Um why why has Twitch changed the uh UI on the subscribing using subprime? Because they want to trick you into not using your prime sub? Yeah. You have to okay. click a button, Sorry, and then you have to that's... click a button to say, I want to use Prime, and then they're like, Oh, okay, now you can use it. Well you have to click a button to elevate you have to elevate your subscription to then click a button to be able to then click a button to be able to use your free prime. It, yeah. It, I don't understand. I think um, Twitch Prime is like Amazon's most hated thing that ever happened. They're like, this was a mistake. We shouldn't have No done one this. asked them to buy it. I think it's just like, it's so ingrained into the culture now, it's, it would be very hard to remove Twitch Prime. I mean, they've been removing a lot of stuff recently. I don't know if you know, but they actually just removed Watch Party from Twitch. Well, um, also soft to, ma to match to, Amazon's prime to soft video. also remove Watch Party from Amazon because you have to have the ad yep. uh, free version to use Watch Party, which is so dumb. Yeah, I, I was, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point to say why am I, why am I even subscribing to Prime at this point? Like, I'm running out of things I'm actually using. Well, I know my they, my brother just unsubbed from Disney Plus because they've just upped the prices on that. Oh, geez, um, so I, I don't know. have access okay. to Disney Plus anymore. <laughs> I was watching I was watching Apple TV through a free trial because they give they give out a lot of like Apple TV uh, promos. Oh, there it is, baby! That's what I've been waiting for. Thank you, Tones at RT for the <laughs> yeah, subscription. Get to, yeah, I get to thank the one person who subs during the well, show. You love to see it. And all I had to do was navigate. Uh, uh, what's it? All you Dark have to Patterns? do is, is go through one of those right? like flash game mazes. <laughs> With your mouth, yeah. and if you touch the sides, a giant screamer pops up and, and shouts you. I'll I'll pay real money. Yeah, that's the that's the yeah. scary part. What what Twitch wants from you is fucking disgusting, and it's real money and yeah. not using your Prime sub. Uh, yeah, which is already real money, but yeah. What was I saying? Uh. You completely sidetracked me. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, I don't. I don't remember. I was. Too, I was too busy trying to click the buttons. Uh, I was talking about indie games, and then I was talking about 
The news, April 4th. Oh, I was talking about TV subscription. I was talking about Apple TV. Oh, yes. Yep, yeah, yeah. Apple TV. I think I've watched everything that's worth watching on Apple TV, so I'm like, okay, I don't need Apple yeah. TV. I, like, I watched Silo, which is, which is fucking amazing. Um, I watched Killers of the Flower Moon, the film. I was like, oh, that, that's actually pretty good. It's the newest Scorsese film. And then uh, I watched Severance, which I've wanted to watch Severance for a while, but a friend said, oh, oh you should watch Severance. So I was like, yeah, Severance is really fucking good. Um, so yeah, so I don't have Disney plus anymore. I don't have Apple TV anymore. Amazon's gone to shit, not got Disney plus anymore. Did I say that one? Uh, I still have Netflix and that will, t- I'll talk about Netflix cause I've been playing a couple of games on Netflix. Did I talk about last week how I was playing Hades on, um, the mobile phone? Yes. Yeah. yeah that was last. Yeah. Yeah. So talking about the games I've been playing this week, Tony, um, I was on the Netflix app on the web browser and I was scrolling through. I was like, oh, what's on Netflix? And it just popped up with games beta. And I was like, what? And I clicked on it and it was like, you can now play a bunch of games on the Netflix through your web browser. Because in the beginning, it was just limited to mobile. Yeah. So we had stuff like, like I played Reigns, Three Kingdoms, and I just downloaded an app. And then they were specifically porting games for Netflix, like the GTA Definitive Edition trilogy on mobile, and then Hades recently as well. Only for iOS. My question is, do people actually know this exists if if you Uh, subscribe to Netflix? I I found out about this yesterday, and I think it's been available for maybe like six months or something. So Okay. Interesting. So immediately on the homepage or anything, right? It was like, I was just scrolling down. You know, you have like the rows right. of, of films and TV yeah. shows and stuff. And then one of them yeah, was just the games and it said beta in the in the corner. And I was like, wait, what? Okay. I didn't know about this. So I was like, immediately I was like, I'm going to test this out. Um, yeah. I said, so I was like, the first one I clicked on was Reigns. Because I'm like, I know Reigns. I'll know what Reigns is supposed to look like. Um, <laughs> yeah. And... Immediately, I was like, okay, they're not running this natively. This is being streamed because there was some compression on the video. Like, you could tell it was being uh, streamed. So, right. it seems You're like even, right e- even on the PC at the moment, they're streaming everything. So, it's more like an X Cloud or a, you know, a PlayStation Now sort of where they're streaming the video to you rather than you playing them natively, which is kind of disappointing. I mean, a lot of the games that are on there are lightweight games, but even then, um, I think they could be running a web browser or, dare I say, Netflix makes a standalone app so I can just download them and play them on my PC. Um, no, that's ridiculous. But yeah, I didn't yeah, really so experience that much input latency, but then again, there wasn't really... On Reigns. Yeah, on Reigns. I, <laughs> yes. I don't know. So I also played... <laughs> oh, I played. Did I play another game? I wanted to see if there was anything that wasn't a slow-paced game. And I came across a game called Infernax, and I'd never heard of it. Literally, I clicked on no, it. No, never heard of it. Never oh, yeah. It. I think it came out, like, um, two years ago, like, 2022. Uh, I started playing it, and I was like, wait a minute, this game's sick. <laughs> I was like, I've never heard of this game, but it's actually really cool. Um, so it's basically, like, a modern-day take on, like, Castlevania? It's sort of like a castle, oh, okay. like a Metroidvania Castlevania game. Like the old, yeah, okay, interesting. Because immediately I went to the options because I was like, how do I turn the fucking volume down? Which of course I couldn't, so I had to do it in volume mixer. <laughs> um, yep, as another, always. Another thing as well, it only supports mouse and keyboard because I really wanted to play this game with a controller because it's like a, yep. this is set up to be, a, and it, the Steam version has controller support. It's even like Steam Deck verified. Uh, but the Netflix version, you're li- you're basically live streaming a video, and then there's just mouse and keyboard support, which is kind of annoying. But from the the part I played, um, I found this game to be really fun. Um, I wasn't expecting. I literally was just like, oh, there is no barrier of entry to try this. It's on Netflix. I can immediately click a button and be playing it. I guess having it streamed yeah. means there's like no barriers of entry. You could just be immediately playing it rather than it having it. to download something. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. which I guess is cool. I would like the option, though, to play it locally because I'm assuming if I could play it locally, it'd probably have controller support and then also no video compression. Like, when you stop playing, it asks you questions. So it's like, was the vi- how was the video quality? 
how was the oh, input beta, delay yeah because yeah, in beta um i went to the options and i was like wait what the fuck is that contra i'm just watching the trailer um it has co-op as well okay this game sick um <laughs> <laughs> right get on your steam deck yeah th- this made me want to do- after playing on netflix i was like man that was a great <laughs> teaser to play the actual yeah. game is that not like, a weird phrase of itself? After playing it on Netflix again, yeah, I I don't know. I don't. I think it's cool, but I think it doesn't make sense for Netflix to do this. I don't see this working out for them. I guess they're desperately trying to keep people sub. They're like, yeah, it's our value add. We're a game service and but, a streaming video service. I know this doesn't actually work out like this, but I'm just thinking is like, so you're spending money on this value add instead of like trying to make the core experience better, but. None. I think the idea may be it might be cheaper to purchase games it, than it is to develop TV oh yeah. shows. Yeah, but value add service. things tend to be cheaper to add than like with the core experience. That's that tends to be why they do it. So but I'm just looking going like, yeah, if you are spending money on stuff I don't really want to interact with. Not that I'm a Netflix subscriber anymore. Well, I was in the options menu and I was like, there was this book there, and I clicked on the book. Uh, and I was like, because the book had a picture of what looked like Jason from Friday the 13th. And I was like, wait a minute, oh, what the yeah. fuck? It's Jason from Friday the 13th. I click on it. And it's like, when you start a game, name yourself Stranger for a surprise. I was like, okay. So I called my character Stranger. And I, uh, instead of being this night dude that was in the uh, main game, um, I was fucking Jason from Friday the 13th. I had like a hockey mask, oh, that's cool. a rip shirt. That's pretty and cool. I, had like a, a, I had like a machete and I had like a shotgun. As like my range weapon. Interesting. I'm assuming the default range weapon is probably like a crossbow, but if you play as Jason, you have a shotgun, um, which I thought was pretty cool. But yeah, That's it's cool, it it cool it's very shot. like immediately it will throw you back to like those um, 16 bit like retro SNES sort of stuff, right? Um, it yeah. is very like Castlevania. Once again, I am playing a game like Castlevania while never playing Castlevania before. Um, well, just yeah, ac- I, need to this I point. just accidentally, <laughs> like, I literally saw the art for this game on Netflix, like, oh, that looks cool. And I clicked on it, and I had no idea what it was. And I literally discovered this game because it was on Netflix, and there was zero barriers. Like, I'm feeling like. And now you're going to buy it on Steam. Well, I looked at the price and I was like, if this game was like less than £10, I would just immediately buy yeah. it. But £15 yeah, is a bit. Yeah. A bit expensive for me. Like a lot of the games I've been buying recently have been like um, Balatro is ten pounds, um, Buckshot yep. Roulette was like a couple of quid, it, Window Kill was a couple yeah. of quid. Like there's some a really lot good games under ten pounds. A lot of games recently that've been coming out that've been really successful are super cheap. Like I think um, Power World it was through Games Pass, but I think it's also quite cheap as well. I think it's only like twenty pounds maybe. Power World. Is it twenty five? I thought maybe. Are you uh, it's twenty two pound forty nine. Oh wow, it's pretty cheap. Yeah, it's on sale right now, but it's normally twenty four pound. So yeah, it's around twenty. Oh, okay, pound. right. Yeah, okay. But yeah, um, man, these indie games. But I think pe- people have been saying recently, like triple A games, are- the triple I games are rising, Tony. Like I remember, yeah. one I, the, I, I one completely the, agree. One of the first games that really started this trend of like, oh, it's a cheaper game, I'll pick it up and try it. I think it's Vampire Survivors coming out in. Oh yeah, for sure. Twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two. It came out into early access first, right? Um, yeah, was it a pandemic game? It released it in. It shows you the early access. Uh, early access release two thousand and twenty one. Right at the end, right. like December, right at the end, and then yeah. came out of early yeah. access in October 2022. So, so it's post-pandemic, technically. Yeah. There was an Italian, it was like a one one Italian guy. I think he lit, said he lived in London, or he still lives in London. And he was just okay. like, I, th- I saw the Noclip documentary on it, and he basically was saying like, every time he wasn't working at his game development job, he would just at nighttime just be developing this game. And like, oh... I'm just making this really low budget, like little game that I don't have to put too much effort into because it's just, you know, I'm not going to charge a bunch of money. I'm just going to charge a little bit of money for it. 
and then people get what they pay for, right? And it just yeah. blew the fuck up. Like, people love vampires, and, myself included. And because no physical good, you get a lot of money from it because you just make one copy and then you copy it. Yeah, I think like uh, Balacho cost like ten pounds, sold over a million copies. Yep. Buckshot Roulette just yep. came out on Steam. I think it's already sold half a million copies. I've been playing that recently. It's really good. It's really weird. It's really interesting. I like it. Um, but Infernax, um, I guess I've talked about Infernax for a minute because I didn't give you another choice because uh, I just thought <laughs> this was super interesting and I was just playing it last well, night. Yeah, yeah. But you have more than a minute to describe. I just described some of the other so. stuff I've been playing. So I've still, I'm still playing Balatra. I'm like 70 hours in. I have yep. beat the game on Gold Stake, which is the highest difficulty uh, with the Ghost deck. I've almost completed my collection. So I have everything unlocked apart from three Jokers. So I need two Legendary Jokers, which are quite hard to farm because there's a really low chance you get a Legendary Joker every time you open a pack. Right, and so the Glass can, Joker, who's effects. just eluding me for some reason. Uh, I haven't started any of the challenges yet, though. There's like a challenge mode where the game specifically like gives you like a set deck with set rules, and it's like you can or can't do this. Try and beat this challenge. Oh, okay. um, yeah, I've been playing really Buckshot cool. Roulette, which was on my radar when it launched on HIO, but then I heard it was coming to Steam. And speaking of Bellatro, Buckshot Roulette is um, Russian roulette, at, but as like a turn-based game with like roguelike items it is fucking phenomenal it's got this like weird horror aesthetic i'm sure tony we're gonna have to do like a tangerine on like um all of these roguelike games that are coming out because i've been playing like balatro buckshot roulette well, another game i've been playing is friends versus friends uh so recently there was a deck building sale on steam uh, so I picked up a bunch of uh, deck building games, and one of them I've been playing recently is called Friend vs. Friends, which is a card-based uh, 1v1 like um, um, uh, yes. FPS PvP game. Yeah, which yeah. is really really cool. I really I really like it so far. Did, I did think this looked really cool. Yeah, okay, that's nice. So it's like, is it? Yeah. So you just playing? So you have a deck. Like, how does it match? Yeah. Um, so what you choose before the game is you have a character who's a passive and then you get yep. a deck and the deck has, you need to put a minimum amount of cards into your deck and then there's a maximum amount of points and certain cards cost more points to use because they're more powerful. So, so for example, yeah, you had sense. a, you, you, you start with a pistol, right? But you can give yourself like an AK-47, which would give yourself a big advantage in a round, but that costs the reaction points and that's one card. Yeah. So you yeah. Have, at the start of the game, you draw a bunch of cards, but every round you draw three cards. So if you use all of your cards in the first round, you only have three cards left for the next so round. If you're, so if yeah, you if save you're cards while you're winning a right. round, then you get yeah. to have more options. And it makes it really interesting because it's a best of uh, five. So you have to win three games mm -hmm. in a row. Uh, well, not in a row. You have to yeah, win three cool. games. It's really There's also a 2v2 mode as well. It's not just... So it's best of five, so like best two, three, I suppose. Hmm. But no, it's been really cool because I'm like, oh, I found a card that is like every time you use a card, throw a bomb. And I was like, well, I got this, this card called Bomb Belt, which adds two bombs to my hand. So I use this card. I throw a bomb. I get two more bombs in my hand that throws a bomb. And then when I throw these bombs, that's another two bombs on top of that bomb. And then I can mimic oh, the bomb to throw more bombs. And it's just like, <laughs> OK, I'm kind of throwing a lot of like the, it has that deck bomb building man. element while also being like a really tight. 1v1 FPS shooter. It's I, a really cool game. I guess I guess you could say you were a, a, a bomber guy. Yeah. Also, Tony, I'm talking about this game when I'm not supposed to be. Uh, I also play... Yeah. Oh, I also bought Bingle Bingle, <laughs> which if you haven't heard of Bingle Bingle, you've heard of the poker roguelite. Have you heard of the roulette roguelite? No. Um, okay. It's a game where you can like edit your balls and the table to make you wit like you bet on where the ball's going to land. You basically alter the roulette wheel to um, give you better odds and it's set up like a uh, roguelike deck builder. How, but how do you know where the ball's going to land? Oh, you I guess you, you bet on like the colours or the numbers. Yeah, you can right? bet on red or black, but you can, for example, uh, you can change all the pockets to red. That's one of the things you could do. <laughs> okay. So you can always bet on red. 
but your chips are also your balls. So if you want to bet, right. you need to hit on so that. Is that pinball like, then? <laughs> sort of, yeah. I haven't played it yet, but I did watch them on Twitch. Um, but yeah, okay. I've also been playing well. Heartworm. Uh, and this was another one. You know, like I played um, Tenembris Somna or whatever it was, the, the weird horror thing. Yeah. yeah. I heard about this game in the Noclip podcast. Uh, Jesse uh, Garashi was saying, oh, it's really cool. I was like, okay, it's got a demo. I'll check it out. And I w- did not love it. I love the sort of the aesthetic and the style, but it is very much a 90s um, survival game. Uh, um, okay. Survival horror game. And I've got some footage here. Because I don't think I want to make a tangerine on this, despite the fact I've got footage. So... I might as well pick up, pull up the. You wanna... uh, t- I'll just talk about this the game now because I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Um, All right. It's uh, tank controls, so it is like the, that CCTV yeah, camera, say. and literally as the game yeah. launches, it goes. You should probably get a paper and pen to write down, like the, <laughs> to figure out the solution to things. And I was like, "Oh no, I'm not gonna get on with this game." That's not a good side, though. Like, I literally <laughs> waited to buy Pseudo Regalia, which is like a third-person, like Metroidvania Souls-like sort of game, and t- until they added a map, because people were playing it and like drawing their own maps because there was no map in the game, and then they announced they were gonna add a map later to the game. And I was like, I'll just wait for the map update. And I did. So I've yeah. got the game now. But yeah. Yeah. I think I, the, I, the idea of like solving yourself is fine. I just feel like not everyone is willing to do that. Like just have yeah. it as an option. But yeah, this is Heartworm. Um, tank controls. The aesthetic is nice. The, I think the really cool thing it does is I went to this, so it's all like, you know, fro- fixed perspective, you know, like yeah. sort of like a CCTV yeah. camera, which I think is is cool for aesthetics. It's all for controls. I hate tank controls. But um, you go upstairs to this room and there's a door there. And as you go upstairs, suddenly the camera starts zooming into the door and it breaks the, it breaks the rule of the fixed camera. And it's like, okay, something strange is going on here. It intrigued me, but the the puzzle and the tank controls didn't like grab me enough to want to keep playing. Um, I'm sure there might be an interesting game and story here, but again, I don't know, man. Maybe not just for me. Like I have enjoyed games of tank. Like I like Homebody, but yeah, this this game just didn't grip me really. Let's see if I can find the moment. Same. Oh, this this is the moment. I'll show it on screen. You just you go past the door, or you, you go up to the door, and then suddenly it's like, and it's like, okay, what the hell is going on here? Something strange is going on in this house. I like that sort of like um, framing. It's like if you have a film, yeah. you can frame something as, as yeah, strange or unnerving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I was playing that, and I, I'll Tony. There will, there's going to have to be a, ta- a big tangerine coming up. I have finished Persona oh, yeah. 3 yeah, Reload. You did so. Yeah. 82 hours Finally, how- eight, 82, 82 hours later, <laughs> I finished Persona 3 Reload. And you thought you finished at 50 hours? One, If I had to sum up my feelings after completing Persona 3 Reload, I would have to say the word depression. I'm fucking depressed after playing that game. I'm so sad right. after that game. Like... I love those characters in that game. Oh my god, I gotta talk about it, dude. Holy sh- what a right. game. Big big ten drink. You know the saddest up. thing? Persona 3 Reload and Balatra came out in the same year. So I have to <laughs> put them up against each no, other. No, 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 no. You just do what I like this is what I was saying. Like you, you just make up bullshit categories and go, yep, yeah, this is the best category. Okay. Best JRPG, Persona exactly. 3. Exactly. Best, Best gambling game. game. Playing co- oh, gambling. Well, I could go up against <laughs> Bingle Bingle and Buckshot Roulette then, I mean. No, no, it's me. You have to be, you have to be more specific. Best game oh, with okay. playing cards. Uh, but yeah, uh, Persona 3, have to talk about it. Um, yeah. 
I haven't felt that parasocially towards characters since The Witcher 3 and uh, oh, Tris Marigold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I just got to the end of Lightyear Frontier. I think it's a really cool game. I think you would. it's the mech farming game. I think you would yeah, enjoy it, I, I but I don't it. know if you would stick with it because right, okay. it has really strong building and farming mechanics, but it has like next to no automation. So it's not like satisfactory. That's... No, it's fine. It depends on the, the loot, like what you're actually doing, but that, 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 not everything needs automation. Okay, yeah. It's like one of my biggest complaints about um, satisfactory was you make biofuel generators and you set them up right. And it's like, okay, early game's over. You can't do this anymore. And I feel like uh, Lightyear Frontier is a game that goes, well, what if the, you had an entire crafting game, but you had to use nature in the crafting right. for everything? That's what I feel I like mean, uh, Lightyear Frontier is. I feel like uh, Satisfactory, you're meant, to, you're meant to fuck nature and then make it into uh, like the frontier is more like uh terra nil or like slime yeah, yeah it's very much about yeah. using nature respect respecting nature. Yeah. and then i also played a game yeah, called lonely that. mountains downhill which is like a low poly mountain biking downhill game and i played it because it was on games pass and my friend jesse was playing and i was like that looks fun i'm gonna try that and it was pretty fun it was fun, okay. And that's every game I have been playing in the past two weeks and a half. Well, and we're only 26 <laughs> minutes into the podcast. <laughs> yep. Well, sure. I feel like I've gone like three Joe's games in one. I don't know if you actually want to put a timer. <laughs> yeah, I've already given up on doing the one minute timer i've already talked about infernax and Fr well you asked about friend versus friend so. yeah yeah i did <laughs> so let's go on to announcements i think no trailers sorry tony have you heard of overwatch i think i have yeah what if you took yep. overwatch but you did it with marvel characters i think it, it is, is it netties as well that's doing this I think it is. Okay, interesting. Wait, so this is basically just Overwatch. In, oh, okay. Yeah, it's Marvel I Overwatch. Marvel I was not like, expecting this to be so but it's Overwatch. Like, but it's like, but it's like netties or so. So it's very much like anime, very like Chinesey sort of characters at the same time. If you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. They. They. They're in. Yeah. They're like Marvel, but inspired by. <laughs> I was watching a video the other yeah, day I and it was you. talking about like uh, dubs versus subs for games because I've been playing like a lot of Japanese games and usually I play them dub, but sometimes I play them subbed and right. a lot of people were saying well the reason I don't watch uh, anime stuff in English dubbed is because it doesn't sound as good as the original uh, audio it's supposed well, to most it's... of the time there are some exceptions yeah yeah, yeah. but you want to hear something really interesting Genshin yeah. Impact is by far mostly played in Japanese by Western people. Oh, Genshin Impact really? is a Chinese game. I don't, I didn't, I didn't even know this, but Genshin Impact what? is made by by Chinese people. Yeah, so like, I, I, I knew they were Chinese. But people still, even because it has an anime aesthetic, most people play it in the Japanese dub, despite the fact it's not its native language. Interesting. Interesting. I know, I do know that. Um... I know there's the whole thing of like, oh, China steals everything sort of thing. But like, uh, China's China is very inspired by like Japanese animation. So I'm not, I don't know. I guess that fits the vibe. But yeah, I saw this and I was like, what the hell? Marvel fucking <laughs> Overwatch? You you know what? Yeah. It doesn't look, t I like Overwatch and this doesn't look terrible. If, I think this is free to play. Um, if it's free to play, I'm not 100% sure, but if it is, I will play it. I will try it. I also typed okay. Marvel Overwatch into Google. No, Marvel Rivals <laughs> is what the game's called. Oh, yeah, it's a Netties. It is being developed by Netties, it and it's on Netties, Steam, okay. right? Um, but yeah, I'm down to try this uh, because yeah. it, at worst, I could play it and then... I mean, it has in-app purchases already question, on the store page. So. My question to you, though, is are you going to put the Japanese dub on? 
Uh, yeah, and I, I, I'm going to get a five star uh, Spider Man waifu. That's going to be my goal. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, because people, because the, because like, um, what was it? The Galactus or whoever this is from the Marvel stuff. Galactus, Galactus. is is yeah. a dude, right? But in this game, yeah. it's a woman. <laughs> Normally, like, did they just turn Galactus into a waifu <laughs> to try and get more people to spend just, money? Gender sort of Galactus. Have they did this on everyone as an option? That'd be great. Oh, get the She Hulk out. Get the. Uh... Exactly. Well, she has a separate character. You can't. Yeah. Just, that, maybe that's what you would do. I she don't comes know. in and be I like, it's. Gender swap things have never been gender swap before. It's lawyering time. And then she starts twerking like in the TV <laughs> series. Wait! Morbius is Marvel as well. Yeah, we'd have She Hulk and Morbius. It's morbing time. Guys, it's, I'm ready to be morbed. <laughs> Uh, uh, next, next uh, trailer we have is uh, a game called Nightmare Cart, which you may or may not know as Bloodborne Court uh, Cart received a DMCA notice from Sony. Oh yes, saying that they could no longer publish the game as Bloodborne Court uh, Cart. Uh, they're not going to court. Makes sense. And uh, Makes they've sense. now completely rebranded themselves as uh, Nightmare uh, Cart. Yeah, I... so it's. I'm glad it was just a trademark problem and not like something inherent to like what was in the game. I'll do the classic Nintendo and be like, right, we are seizing all of your assets. Pay yeah, us a, pay us a million dollars. Sucked. And uh, you have to basically shut everything down. That would have sucked. Right, as someone who does not play Bloodborne, Nintendo. I don't know how different these characters are now. And if it. I, I, my question would be to Bloodborne fans, which everyone in the world is at this point, based on the comments I see from every single um, yeah. E3 is just Bloodborne question mark, Bloodborne question mark. Like everyone yeah. wants a new yeah, version yeah. of Bloodborne. I would, I, I love the aesthetic of Bloodborne, so I, I, could, I can get down with um, that. But is this visually distinct enough from the original that you're like, okay, they won't come after them again? I, or is it like this, so I visually see, distinct like, just, you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to play this anymore. I was kind well, of I, I look in the idea of a Bloodborne game. Inspired, yeah, not copied is, is what I would say. Okay. But equally, I don't know. Man, like, okay, here's a question though. Like if I copied God of War, but just called him Dad of War, like not not like... Like I've recreated the model myself, but like he looks just like Kratos from from Dad of War, God of War Four. Just reading like, like a, have you like, seen this? Do you have this YouTube redesign as well, where they've got thumbnails at the bottom and comments on the side? No, absolutely oh. not. That's disgusting. Well, I've been given <laughs> it. Apparently, they're doing some beta or something. I guess. Uh, if that becomes the main way, I'm gonna have to try. To... Luckily, I don't have CSS skills to change this, but I'd have to change it around back because that's awful. I hate Just that. read in the comments. Still going to call it Bleed for Speed. Can't wait for legally distinct <laughs> bodily fluid cart. Um, I really loved it when Bunless just shouted out, "It's carting time." I mean, it it's harder to <laughs> it. It kind of does make it easier to read the comments this way. I, and you don't. I feel like I'm not yeah. getting that much less thumbnails compared to where how many I, I would be able to see. Sure, I just don't. I don't like. I think it. Okay. Here's my thing when it comes to design changes. I don't right. understand why this isn't normal. This is a complete tangerine. Why the hell can there not be an option? Like, you don't have to have one monolithic design for your website. You could have options. Because then you, you get stuck supporting both. two different separate options for eternity. Nah, just support Reddit just support made one, this mistake. The they said, okay, you guys don't like new Reddit. We're going to allow you to have old Reddit forever. Nobody uses new Reddit and everybody uses old Reddit and they're stuck having to support two different versions of Reddit. I don't... I, the YouTube doesn't change that much, though. I don't know the support... Also, I'd like to point out that they... The way that most people run websites, the way they manage their front ends should stream like that massively. I, I, I just... I just there's, considering the money they make... Or maybe don't make, but at least the money they spend. There's, there's, there's no excuse in my opinion, and it's just I'm, all I'm asking for is to move modules around. I don't see it being a massive problem. Let's talk about uh, PO'd. Pod, Tony. Oh. April first, Night Dive is like, um, let's remaster a game that I've never heard of, but apparently. 
It's like a cult. It's not, I don't know if it's cult class, dude, but it's like an FPS platforming game that was on the PlayStation 1. Like, it is a very, like, strange game. Apparently, um, John from Digital Foundry has heard about this game. But it seems like they were like, oh, on April 1st we'll announce this, and it seems like they're just actually doing this. And I'm really interested in this game because I know lots of people when this game... What? Lots of people... Yeah, this game looks fucking weird. I know a lot of people when this game came out didn't like it, but that was like... It was a first-person FPS game on controller. This was before dual analog stick. Like, the controls for this are really oh, strange and stuff right. like that. Right. Yeah, that'd be awful. But I'm so interested to see, is, is there time? genuinely a good game underneath this with, like, modern controls and stuff? I think it's definitely a weird game underneath it, yeah. What is... um? This is so, like, Night Dive, though, like... They don't, they're not like, okay, what's the game if we remaster it? We'll get the most money from it. They're like, oh, this game's really <laughs> no. cool and no one can play it. Why don't we just remaster this? <laughs> like, it's like um, I know, Power Slave Exhumed. I was like, what the fuck is this game? Night Dives remastered it, I guess. Um, but yeah, another game from the 90s I've never heard of being remastered by Night Dive. I, You'd love to I guess see the it. Strategies- Love expectations, and if it does really well, they're the high high game. Yeah. Well, they're still under Atari now, so it's, this is Atari yeah. strategy, I guess. Possibly. Yeah. I don't know. I, I assume Atari's just been kind of hands off based on. I don't. I, I can't. I feel like Atari can't be like, guys, Night Dive, we need you to remaster Poe Definitive Edition. We need Poe Definitive <laughs> Edition. We need you to remaster this game. It just doesn't make that much sense. But yeah, it's cool nonetheless. I think it's really cool. Um, next up, we have announcements. Oh, we got a sad news today. Uh, Lewis uh, Gossett Jr., who voiced the Vorsa Guns in Half Life 2, has passed away. He was 87 years old. Oh, you man. hate to see oh. it. I just, one thing to say, Gala Lunga. You hate to say it. So, okay. Please, some of those people that lead to impressions. Wait, was of was he in Stargate? What is oh, this? Wait, what? Okay. Someone's replying oh. with a uh, image of what looks like I. Okay, I've never seen Stargate. I don't remember that episode. Is that Stargate? It looked like Stargate. Yeah. Stargate's conflicted Jaffa Garrick. Seems like he was in Stargate. What episode? Uh, featured in a major story arc in the ninth season of Stargate SG-1. Oh, okay. I didn't get that far. Okay. Well, you've got something to look... You've got the Vortigan to look forward to. <laughs> uh, un <laughs> unfortunately, sure. in one of his last roles, because he's uh, no longer with us, but that's a shame to hear. Yeah, rest in, rest in peace, but always be remembered. Now, Tony, I was going to say, hey... There's a triple I gaming festival coming up on April 10th, but because we've delayed the podcast so much, it's just happened. Um, so there's some <laughs> yeah. really cool things to talk about. But I do today is April 10th. I do love this yeah, idea April. of um, most big game studios are doing triple A games, whatever the fuck that means. And then most, and then Ubisoft's coming out and trying to do quadruple A games, whatever the fuck yep. that means. And then. Yep. A bunch of indie guys from like Darkest Dungeon, Dead Cells, Slay the Spy got together and were like, why don't we make a triple I showcase? Because we're My, we're too small for these like really small yeah. indie festival E3 things, but we're not big enough to be like a headline in like a Microsoft showcase or a um what's it called? Um like the summer Jeff Fests or whatever. And apparently like recently, like that there was a ton of Games Pass deals for indie games, and apparently all that stuff's dried up. Like Games Pass and stuff oh, doesn't really? want to give up these deals for indie games anymore. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, so they're struggling to to find a place to gonna, advertise and sell and stuff. I was going to say, based on the name, though, I feel like as as long as we remember that it's a joke, and then 
normal media publication just unironically call it triple I? Like, yeah, this is definitely what it's called. Like, it, it's a joke. Have you remember? I it's think a joke? you do have like Thank these you. triple I games though that are like they're indie. I, I think, but they're yeah, better I, the than I, most indie. The games. concept is fine. But the, I, the the idea of triple A being a naming that we just accept and go, yep, that's a thing. I just think like, it's dumb. for example, I don't think triple I should be it's like either. If I was going to name a triple I game, I think yeah. uh, this would be a good naming scheme for something like Dave the Diver or Ori and the uh, yeah. Blind Forest, because these are independent studios who are inside bigger no, studios. Bigger. Yeah, yeah. Or you have like really well, talented, well-made games like Hades. Side of the Spire, Dead Spells, that sort of game, and you're like, oh, well, this is like a triple I game. Because I get Baldur's Gate, I suppose. Yeah. But but, but we're just... But they are yeah, like, is Baldur's yeah, Gate like an indie own, game? Te- yeah, they, they... I believe they got... No, no, they didn't get funding from them, the other people. They just got the rights for it. I don't think they got any funding other than from other stuff they were doing, so... Yeah, I believe. I I don't have a problem with having a name for it, but I just feel like calling it like it's almost like naming having a genre of game that says what what color palette they use. It's not really a genre; it's just a style. In this in this case, it's more like it just kind of describes their business strategy not necessarily what the game actually is well, like, I, don't I think there's a million this is not ways trying, you can this is not trying to be like a tag yourself. on the steam no. to be like this is the type of game no no uh, what i'm saying is that at some point if this catches on if i, I ever actually gets just everything's get called triple i i feel like that's where the joke's been lost I, yep. in my opinion I, I this think currently is a joke based on how Mis- the name is a joke, misrepresented everything is in the gaming uh media yep. stuff big publishers will just stop being like we've got a triple i game coming to games oh Pass. yeah and 100 percent. and when that happens it's dead the, the name meme is dead not not, meme. not 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 the not this idea not this oh, okay Yeah. Uh, oh, a n- next announcement. Uh, Battleground Season 7, uh, April 16th, the Duos mode is finally coming to Battlegrounds. I've been waiting for this for a long time. I have a friend who has promised me as soon as Duos mode launches in Battlegrounds, he's coming back into Hearthstone. So, Oh, April, he's back. April 16th, Hearthstone Andy will be back. Hearthstone <laughs> reborn. He was... He was Halo. He was Hearthstone Andy. He went to Halo Andy, and then he became RuneScape Andy. And now he will be Hearthstone Andy again. You'd love to see it. Once more, Halo Andy will rise from the ashes. Yeah. Next up, we yeah, have. Like, oh, come. That's interesting. No, I was saying, no, I'm just, I think I'm interested in this as well. I might maybe look into it, but it is competitive. That's a problem. Yeah, but it's very like. Low APM, yeah, yeah, sure. um, yeah. And, and completely, and like, completely free to play. Well, I think as well that the fact that everything's on the same sort of level, like when you start a game, it's like entirely how you. Yeah. Every game, everybody starts out at the same point. Yeah, I appreciate that. Then we have, uh, I don't know if you, I think it was April eighth, which is like two days ago, or was it? Yes, the Wii U and the 3DS stores and all the DS stores have officially shut down now. So you can no longer uh, go online with your Wii U or your 3DS, which means that Mario Maker on the Wii U and the 3DS, you can no longer access any of those individual levels. Before this happened, um, there was a team that got together uh, that was basically trying to defeat every single Mario Maker level on the service in order to have a human defeat it before it was taken away. I think all of it's been preserved now. There is also a project called, I don't know if you've heard of it, Pretendo, which basically no. um, pr- what Pretendo does is now that they've de- bu- defunct the online services for Nintendo, it's basically community-hosted servers uh, for oh, okay. the Wii U right. and the three, so if you have a hacked so three, you could, Wii U or a 3DS, you can put Pretendo you can on point there, it at that. and you can still play Splatoon online, or you can still play Mario Maker yeah. levels on the the 3DS and the Wii it, U. 
Um, it's kind of like the projects that like preserve like the nineties internet. You like point. Yeah, and if you don't have uh, a console, you can um, use Pretendo through Simu, the Wii U emulator, and also, oh, this is going to pay me to say this. Citra, the 3DS emulator, had Pretendo integration. <laughs> that mm. doesn't fucking exist anymore unless you uh, go to the Internet Archive. But that's such a shame for, you know, preserving 3DS and Wii U um, internet connectivity stuff because there was a lot of cool stuff on there, especially stuff like Mario Maker. But basically, the final level of Mario Maker... Um, the creator admitted so in order to submit a level to mario maker you have to complete it yourself to to prove that it's doable that you can actually complete yeah. it the yeah. creator of the final level admitted he used taz uh to complete the level if you don't know what taz is it means tool assisted speed run so they used a robot to play the level who can do things that would be impossible for humans, like inputs that would be impossible right. for a human to do. So people were theorizing that the final level might actually be impossible for a human to complete. Um, th but the community persisted, and Sani yx 91 smm 2 um, was conquered. Um, so we have a... Is this the video here of the completion? It's going to look quite short and it may not look that impressive, but trust me, this is incredibly hard to do. It looks um, incredibly hard from what I'm seeing. Okay. Yeah. Jesus Christ. It's a very short level, but it was theorized that was only possible with a robot before, but it's actually been beat by... So every single Mario Maker level has been destroyed now um, that the servers are shut down. So... Um, yeah, if you, if you want to keep playing stuff like the original Mario Maker and stuff like that, uh, check out, um, Pretendo. I think you can just go to their website, Pretendo. Pretendo.network. Uh, for, uh, yeah. And, and on the Pretendo website, they have like a list of all of the games they have running and all of the features they have running. So you can keep a track on the stuff that you want to oh, use nice. through it. Which is pretty cool to yeah, see. That's good. That's really good. Yeah, that's really good to see. Yep. Again, massive fan of archiving things. Massive fan of allowing people to re <laughs> reconnect. Yep. Oh dear. Next up we have releases. One Pepper day. Pepper Grinder came out on the twenty eighth of March, Tony. I want to play this game so bad. I almost bought it because it was like twelve pounds and I was like, Man, I've bought a couple of games recently and I've got Games Pass and I was like I want to play this game so bad, but I'm like, do I need to buy this game right now? Like, can I wait a little bit for it to go on sale and then just pick it up there? Because um, I played the demo and I was like, this game's fucking awesome. And then um, I don't know if you saw their launch website actually has a playable version of Pepper Grinder inside the website, which is oh my fucking... God, no, I played that's... this and I was like, I want to play it right now even more. <laughs> like, this is so fun. That... This is beyond a demo. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool, yeah. But yeah, Pepper Grinder, from the demo, this game fucks. Apparently it's quite short, though. Apparently it's only about four to six hours long, something like that. Um, oh, that's fine, yeah. But yeah, this game is really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, so well, so is that reviews. how long it is to get 100%, or is that just to, to complete it? Uh, I'll have a look at the reviews. Um, I played Pepper Grinder demo during Netflix and really loved it. I was eager to anticipate the game's release, and I immediately picked it up and played it despite some of the goods that cropped up during the game. Overall, Pepper Grinder is a massive, massively underwhelming game. Before I get to the issues I have with the game, I just want to mention the art and say that the game is pretty fantastic. The pixel art, the kind of the animation, the color palette. Pepper Grinder excels when it's just Pepper and Grinder and a whole lot of dirt. The movement is tight, it's fun, it's fast, and it's quite a lot of personality to it. The game throws in some fun gimmicks too, where dousing lava with water, which allows you to quickly drill through the magma before it melts, or the ice that will break behind you as you drill, creating exciting moments of platforming in really unique ways. Um, the game just discards those ideas so quickly that when 
With a runtime of roughly three to four hours, they feel very underutilized. Some of the ideas only appear once or maybe twice over the 23 total levels. I just wish there was more that I could do with them. It absolutely does not help. There are so many parts of other levels that focus on all the things that don't make the game fun. Having to shoot rockets at ice takes longer than it needs to. Combat sections get old after the first level. World 4 is almost entirely focused around these slower, less drilling inspired ones. Um... I wouldn't feel so bad except for one giant glaring problem. The bosses, the boss battle in this game is outright bad. Unfortunately, not a single one that is fun. They're tedious and frustrating to fight and show off every single flaw the game has to offer. The game is just not built for these. Too short, more levels will be all time trials. Short and sweet. So it seems like the game itself is fun, but there's a lot of ideas where it's like, oh, let's do this for one level, this for one. And it's like, people would yeah, like it to be of... a bit more fleshed out and they would like more of it, is more what I'm getting. Than... The big yeah. the big pain point, it seems to be from the reviews, is people don't like the boss fights in the game. It's like a big I, pain point. Yeah, I think there were boss fights. I, for one, enjoy Super Echo the Dolphin Kong Country. Yeah, it does remind me of Echo the Dolphin a lot, like the movement. Um, but Damn. yeah, Game sick. Um, definitely still want to play it. Looks really, really cool. Um, also, I'm going to be playing more of the website because I enjoy the website. What, no? Uh, no. Uh, content warning. Oh. This game came out on April 1st, Tony. So you remember uh, Landfall, who'd like to uh, pull lots, lots of like interesting um, games. I think they've given out a few games for free over the years, but... For content warning, they were like they got their take on like a phasmophobia lethal company and released it for free for forty eight hours or twenty four hours or something. So it was just for like April first, you could pick this up and keep it forever, and then after that point, they were going to start selling it. Oh, so I guess, wait, I guess the you, I, you got something on April first. Yes, I did. I got an entire game for free on April first. That sounds like a prank. I have not played it yet, though, because I don't know anyone else who owns it. I'm going to say, like, is this just a, like, if this is a game you need other players, it's like, it's yeah. going to be early birds to get it, they convince their friends yeah. to buy it. I literally was having this conversation uh, a couple of days ago where a couple of my friends were like, we should play a game together, let's play Lethal Company. I was like, well, there is this game that just came out that I've got <laughs> called Content Warning, and it's kind of like Lethal Company, but the right. way it works is... Um, <laughs> Instead of being like you collect scrap and take it back to a ship, you have to film really scary things and upload them to SpookTube. Um, so the, okay. the entire concept is you're trying to just film really scary things and then upload them. So it's doing it in like a... It's taking the idea of like comedic horror and then just turning it up to 11, like the slapstick horror sort of thing, which I think is a very good way to go with these sort of games. Um mm. But I haven't played. You can queue up with random people, but I would much rather play this game uh, with friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think scary things are like I, I, I more like not party game. Or I guess I don't know. I guess it's, if it's like to be funny, I guess it's not scary. Well, one of my friends the other day was like, "We should all play a game together." Then I was like, "Well, half of us don't own this game, half of us don't own this game." Oh, you, you bring up the half, spreadsheet. Half of it, half of us hate this game. Half of us have played too much <laughs> of this game, and I'm like, "Well, there is this thing where if we all had it, we could play multiplayer games together because we'd all own them at the same time." And I was like, "It's called Xbox Game Pass, and if we all yeah. had Xbox Game Pass, then we could just hop into multiplayer games just uh, easily." And that's um, when they said that you, unless they asked you to buy it for them, right? Okay. I don't think I convinced anyone, unfortunately. I mean, I have one friend who has right. a Game Pass uh, that I play with sometimes, but yeah. But yeah, this this game looks pretty cool. I have not played it, but maybe I will try it and see. Maybe I'll just play the solo experience and just go online and see if it's actually worth like, it would be interesting to look at this from the angle of, is content warning worth playing if you have no friends? That would be an interesting angle to look at it from. Um, I mean, you could play it and then also kind of theorize, like, oh, would this be fun with, with friends? Uh, and then we have uh, Buckshot Roulette came out on April 4th, and this is the Russian roulette game, turn-based 
game with items and i was literally playing this before the podcast earlier today and i played it for like an hour and a half straight i was like oh this is really fun um it it, it takes like this weird creepy horror aesthetic and mixes it with this you're in a club back room and you take it in turns either shooting yourself or your opponent and it shows you how many blanks and shells there are and then you have to try and like you know the concept of counting cards you're like counting bullets i'm like okay so this bullet is a blank that there's two blanks and then there's three shots i have better odds of hitting a shot i should shoot my opponent but you may have an angle where you're like okay there's four blanks in the gun and there's one shot in the gun that's like an actual uh bullet i'm gonna shoot myself because then i could hit a blank and you're like well why would you want to shoot, shoot yourself if you shoot your opponent with a blank it skips your go if you shoot yourself with a right. blank you get to go again so essentially what you're doing by shooting yourself with the blank is you're getting to the bullet so you can shoot your opponent um but then things get really interesting because at the start of every round you get items so there's an item that lets you uh, smash a mag. It's like it's like a magnifying glass. You're like, okay, you would use the magnifying glass to look inside. No, you like smash it, and then you open up the gun, and you're like, okay, there's a bullet in there. Or like um, to heal, you smoke a pack of cigarettes. It's like so dark and gritty. Uh, yeah, you can eject. Funny. You can eject the current chamber to try and figure out what's left in the gun. You do that by cracking open a beer and drinking it. Um, you can skip your opponent's go for an, a turn. You literally handcuff them to the table. It is a really, really cool game. It's really, really cool. Um, recommend it. Let's move on to quick news. Uh, Stop Killing Games is a new campaign to prevent publishers from taking their titles offline. Have you seen the Accursed Farms video on this? Yes. I've seen uh, I'm, I'm, I'm much old, but I did see that. Yeah, I thought we were talking so about this was well. to do with the crew take like Ubisoft taking the yeah. the crew down because the servers have gone down, so you can no longer play the game that you own because Ubisoft is like, I, oh, don't, we don't want to support the servers yeah. anymore. I can't um, believe that the last straw is like, well, the thing he's happening, it's time to do something. But yeah, but basically, um, the practice. Uh, how the highlight how developers and publishers are intentionally designing games to become unplayable as soon as support ends. According to the Stop Killing Games website, the practice lies in a legal gray area, largely because most governments do not have clear laws regarding the issue. The campaign's goal is to convince authorities to examine the legality of this practice and hopefully pass legislation to end as it represents the assault on both consumer rights and the preservation of media. The crew is said to have a player base of at least 12 million people when it was taken offline. Making this an ideal opportunity to hold a AAA publisher responsible for their action. The campaign is petitioning multiple governments to investigate the issue, while the main focus is France's D Directorate General for Competition, Consumer Affairs and Fraud Protection. People in the United Kingdom, Canada and Australia will soon Why, be able to wait, sign petitions to pressure France? their respective governments to look into this matter. I don't know. I guess the, the <laughs> is that French... Is where it is in, in Europe? Oh, you think it might be like Ubisoft French yeah, division? Maybe. Plans are also underway for the European Union, but Scott says this may be delayed due to processing time. Um, so basically, I think they're yeah. just trying to get everyone to look into this. The set, you know, remember the thing that happened with loot boxes, and suddenly it was yeah. like, oh, the Dutch the, government's looking at this, the UK government's yeah. looking into this. Like the, the thing with like the EU as well is like if there's like lots of other discussions going on, it's much more likely to be looked at thoroughly, and that is what you'd want to do. So I think this is the right direction to go. If I remember correctly, he says like. There's correct things. There's correct ways to do things like what EA did yep. with um, Knockout City, where yep. they allowed players to host 100%. their own servers when they shut it down. Yeah, like there I is. There's correct ways to sunset games. shutting down. Yeah, yeah. You have to sunset it in a specific way. Yeah, I completely agree. You don't have to have it from the start, but have dedicated servers and self-hosting the content you don't get when you buy the game or you download the game that only they have access to would be. Yeah, that's all. That's. That's all that's really needed. Just make all the software accessible when you're not going to run it anymore. Oh, do you want to talk about this next one? Because you sent this to me. Yes. Um, the Linux backdoor that was caught. So I don't yeah, know too much about this, but uh, t tell yeah, me about this. I, 
So my understanding is that if this wasn't caught early, so this is a the back. This isn't a backdoor in like Linux itself per se. But like yeah, the way there's, a, there's a main there's a main kernel like branch of of the Linux yeah. under is it under Red Hat that that does the main. Yeah, I think Red Hat. If if this wasn't caught, this could have been like merged into like some Red Hat's products, which which um, includes CentOS and I can't where their other main one is, but like a, there are a lot of users. So the mo uh, the, uh, the way this has currently been done, the way it's been caught means that only the people like with the absolute cutting bleeding edge versions would have had this version. Um, okay. So I'm going to try and explain it. I'm going to, I think, uh, yeah, you have the uh, website up. I guess yep. we could link it. Um, this is our Seneca article. I think it does a pretty good. I didn't, I, I until really, I didn't know who actually did it. I was watching videos describing the process and the implications of it. So my understanding is that there's, some, there's a tool called, America's called it XZ Utilities. I'm going to call it XZ Utilities. Yeah. Um, or Utils. I think it's meant to like be a joke. Like it's meant to say sexy utils or something. I don't what know. What I've learned about the uh, Linux community is a lot of their naming for stuff is just jokes. That yeah, only makes sense jokes. to Linux people. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I have, I think I I believe I've actually downloaded this bug in the past. I don't think I use it anymore. Um, like one of the, my first development things, but. Basically, someone committed codes to this slowly over time. So apparently, it's like in 2021, they like committed something first. But they didn't have anything to do with it, but I think it was like getting their foot in the door. But eventually, it was then... It wasn't in the code itself. It was in the make files that creates the code that then added this malware to it, which adds a backdoor to um, SSH or like... Um, I, 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 you, you know what SSH is, don't you? I'm just trying to explain it to SSH. Not the What's the best head, no. way to describe it? It's like it's like um, you can log in from a system anywhere, basically. So it's like it's like secure shell in over the protocol. Internet. Yeah. Um. So okay. the the idea with this backdoor was that they had, they injected a, a, another another key that that if you had this key, you could access the computer, and the way that this utility is linked means that it would have root access to your device and your and or all systems connected to it effectively. And it's just like that it's it's pretty bad. Again, if this wasn't caught, it, it could have been absolutely catastrophic for a lot of people. And especially if like I think someone was just saying like if this was actually made or like initiated by um, a government, like that would have been a huge Export. You know, you know the one thing that like, pisses me off is this was done through uh -huh. GitHub. Oh yeah. It, it, the well, number, the number one thing is like I see code on the internet randomly. I'm like, I don't trust this. I don't know who made it. I see it on mm. GitHub, and I'm like, yeah, this is fine. Execute this on my computer. But, <laughs> yeah, I just, but that's, I, this is the thing that I just like, always trust like, GitHub. Yeah, I, I think this is kind of a watershed moment because the code itself doesn't have the malware in. It's in the make okay. files, which doesn't have the same level of scrutiny at the moment. I think going so it's like forward, a, it's that like will a, not be um, the case. It's like a lock and key. So the, the 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 lock to the malware was uploaded to the back door, and then the key was uploaded uh, to GitHub or whatever, right? And then when they came together, they would inject no. the malware. Is that how it works? No. So the guy the guy committed. So so the the, the utilities itself is an open source project, and this guy committed um, an update. Yeah. Um, the, the actual code, the actual code, the binaries for the actual program were looked at and went, yeah, there's no malware there. But then in the install files, let's call it that, because it's the Linux version of the install files right. had the malware. So the code wasn't malware in the install files either. Just when it was unpacked, it became malware code, which then added oh, so the, backdoor keys to your computer. Compressed, it wasn't malware, but uncompressed, it was. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like, like an actual real virus, where it's not really a virus until it like attacks the cell. Okay. So, it, so this, so I think this is going going forward. I think there's going to be like higher levels of scrutiny of everything now. It kind of sucks, but I think kind of needed. Okay, but the, yeah, the, again, the real hero, the real hero of the story, yeah, the Andres Friand, the principal software engineer at Microsoft. Yeah, so he was just doing some Linux benchmarking, and he noticed that his logging in to SSH to get to his systems was taking longer, so he investigated it. I just find that so funny. 
Uh, get the but, uh, software yes. engineer at Microsoft was like, oh, logging in has taken a couple of seconds extra. Let me investigate this. Oh, yeah, they're trying to backdoor execute malware into the fucking Linux. Yeah, I just find that so funny. Gigachat, well, Sigma Mail. It was both open source and open... So both open source was the, back, was the way malware was added was also the way it was caught. So, oh, man. I think just we need better processes going forward. I, I didn't even realize that was a thing you could do. It's not really something you, you would look at the chat. So, but it's, it's, it's solved. I, it was, I was going to, we were going to put it in the blunders, I suppose, or I was going to put it in the blunders, but it was actually a W. It in was the end. almost a blunder until the Microsoft software engineer came along and said, wait a minute, it's a hero moment. This story turned around. The the other funny thing which is kind of in keeping with April Fools is that it's like every, almost everyone's video is like oh when the penguin cries that's like everyone's like thumbnail I just thought that was very funny penguin of course being the mascot of Linux uh, if you're unaware yes yeah I assume that's Linus's favorite animal I don't know move on I have to... no idea why it's a penguin I don't know either. Uh, should we move on to Emulation Retro? Um, I don't know if you heard, but the Apple App Store has been updated uh, in the EU to follow uh, EU regulations, allowing you to, uh, they've changed the guidelines to now allow uh, alternative music apps, uh, alternative stores, and also one of the rules they changed is previously you were not allowed to upload game emulators to the iOS store. You are now oh, able right. to yeah. upload game emulators to the So this iOS is a big store. W. Well, Apple's statement on the gut, like their guidelines are very confusing what they actually mean. So we're actually going to have to wait to see how this oh, works. Yeah, yeah. So it always takes time for this to be actually implemented and up uh, by the law as so well. According so according to the changes, software that is not embedded in the binary is allowed in certain cases with retro game console emulators app can offer to download games listed as one of those cases. The official Apple guidelines say, links must be provided to all downloadable software. Game console emulator apps can offer to download games. So it's unclear if these emulators themselves need to offer links to ROMs to download, which would be infringe on copyright if they weren't the uh intellectual property owners so if you were someone yeah. like um i don't know uh fucking psp ppp you were like the psp emulator guys and you were like okay we're gonna allow you to emulate the psp and they were like you need to offer a way to download the games they wouldn't be able to do that because that'd be copyright infringement yeah. if yeah. sony was like oh, we want to put PlayStation Plus uh, retro console emulation onto iOS. Let's allow you a way to emulate old PlayStation games through the iOS store. They could definitely do that, it seems like, through these new guidelines. We're not 100% sure. I feel like with combinations of things, you could have a system that you could like point at local files instead of having to be a link. But I, yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Because, like, for a emulator to work on the iOS store, it would need the ability to load iOS uh, ISOs or ROMs from the file system. Yeah. And it yeah. would need to be up to the user to obtain these ROMs and put them onto their phone and then load them through the emulator for it to be safe mm -hmm. to publish and use a emulator app on the iOS store. Um so until we, we see an emulator up there and how it works, we're just not going to know how this is going to work. Although I did get yeah, the update like yesterday, um, which said that the iOS uh, was being updated to allow these new uh, stuff onto the App Store. So we'll have to wait and see um, how that stuff comes to fruition. I'll keep you updated if I can download an emulator or not on my iPhone. Um, you wouldn't yeah. download a game. You wouldn't. Uh, speaking of uh, PSP emulation, uh, Sony has fixed an exploit that lets PlayStation Portal run emulated PSP games after hackers 
responsibly reported issues to PlayStation. Um, so Nguyen said in a follow-up tweet, if we just released it to the public, do you think Sony would have left it unpatched? Reported versus not reporting is only a few weeks of difference. So basically, yeah, that's fair. A, a developer um, figured out how to get the PSP emulation running on the portal natively and then reported it to um, Sony. Because I believe Sony has like a bug bounty system where if you report to them, they'll they'll like um, they will pay you to to show them exploits in their in their systems, right? Yeah, I, I believe that's. The, I think I believe most big um, tech companies have for that. But what the developer was saying was basically like, I haven't released the code for this, so as soon as I released the code for this, Sony would fix the exploit. Yeah. Um. Which I guess is. Another interpretation as well you could look at this is him saying don't update your PlayStation portal and then if he if this gets released then you'll be able to keep your current firmware and try the native PSP emulation on there. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see how this works, but it I yeah, I don't know if it's the dev trying to just claim a bug bounty and trying to be on Sony's good side or is, uh, this is him being like okay, don't update yeah, your dude. portal and I'll release it later and then well, you can try it out. If well, you yeah, he's saying that he's saying it in a way where he's like really trying to be a middle or be in the middle and not like take like be in Sony's bad books. Yeah. Uh and then we have oh, Xbox uh president Sarah Bond has set up a new team dedicated to game preservation and forward compatibility. Um so going forward, Xbox is going to try and have a team dedicated to making sure that none of their games get left behind, like um, a lot of the Nintendo games, for example, which is cool to see. I know like um, yeah. the backwards compatibility program, the uh, what was it called, where you could play Xbox 360 uh, games at higher resolutions and frame rate and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I don't know what it's called, but yeah, on the. So it wasn't boot gaming boost or something. It was um. Game boost or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was very impressive. Yeah, I, I think just think as we get more tools for this, it should, it should get somewhat easier with some minor involvements that require more manual stuff. I, I that's my assumption anyway. Yeah, it's cool to see. Uh, blunders, Tony. Uh, Broku wants to patent the ability to display ads when a console connected to its oh, TV God. are paused. The patent will check yeah. the HDMI devices for inactivity yeah. and overwrite the feed uh, with some great ads. I, I saw the Lewis Rossman video somehow. I'm like, oh, more piracy. I understand. <laughs> well, Roku started out as like a really nice, affordable, smart uh, yes. TV box. And uh, then they up until like last year, it's still, like, it's still recommended, so... And then they got into making TVs, and now they've gone down the full like villain path for the like. Yes. They were they were forcing TVs to accept their terms of service, otherwise they would like essentially brick the device. I don't know if you saw that one yeah, recently. I did. You weren't allowed I not legal to continue EU, using sure. your device until you agreed to their new terms of service. Yeah. Yeah. And now they're doing this thing where, well, if you're paused on a game, you know, you're not you're not needing to use the TV. We'll use it for ad space, you know. Which yeah, is... that's what you need, like your own personal stuff in your own room, in your own house to be advertising space. It's not enough of that red. Would yeah. you remember that oh, UFC game that in between rounds was showing like adverts yep. for the boys and stuff like, and people yep. were really pissed off about <laughs> that? Um, we don't want ads in our own homes. <laughs> Well, speaking of ads, Tony, Discord has started down the dangerous roads of ad this week. Um, Discord's first real foray into ad seems minimally intrusive, but there's now like a, I think it's under the gift inventory. You can, it's like a quest you can complete where you essentially, that, that's what they're calling it. It's like a, you have to stream a sponsored game on Discord. And if you do, you then get so in-game items for that game. It's how they're so doing it's kind it. Kind of like the bounty thing for Twitch, but 
Yes, but without your, any or money. Or your profile. Yeah. Like, the bounty system on Twitch, like, Twitch streamers make money. This is like, hey, yeah, if you yeah, stream yeah. our games to your friends, we'll give you an in-game item in that game. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem quite so worth it. Yeah. Which, I mean, up until now, Discord has been a privately owned company. Is Discord public yet? I don't think it is. Is no, this it's just like propped up by venture capitalist money, right? Yes, and a lot of people have theorized potentially Chinese investors. Ah, yeah, this yeah. was still a privately yeah. held company. I think there's almost that I doubt there'd be Chinese investors. We don't know what percentage, but I suppose. If but... they were going to go public, yep. figuring out a way how to make money would be a very good start for Discord. Well, Steering going public requires you like like super deep investigation, like how your business runs. Yeah, probably important. So I know like they've been doing those stupid fucking avatar decorations and stuff like that. Well, that clown um, one. The one I have. Yeah. Yeah. So that one was given away for free on April Fools, which is why I have yeah. it. Yeah. Um, they for so for Discord's April Fool's joke, they gave a bunch of like fake loot boxes that you can open, open again. And I was like, I wonder why I'm so I open every single uh, item from the loot boxes, and it gave me a clown like uh, <laughs> overlay for my uh, emoji, uh, my picture, my oh, profile picture on Discord. Which I was like, ah, fuck it, I'll wear this. And you remember the April Fool's joke they did where you could change your your sounds on Discord to like a yeah, voice was, pack, which was that, great. That was brilliant. <laughs> And then they ripped it away after April. Do you remember the finished. April Fools of at everyone? It was just like rainbow colors. Also, at, yeah. at anyone, sorry. It randomized who it selected. Yeah. But yeah, I think there was the Discord games thing that failed because people didn't want to buy games through Discord. Um, Discord profile. Shit, I don't I don't know anyone that's interested in it. Discord Nitro is super expensive and doesn't really add that much value to it's subscribe to Discord. Probably their most it's probably their most profitable venture though. Yeah, it seems like they're gonna try the advertising revenue thing by putting these quests oh, into the game. Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of it, it almost reminds me of like the uh Twitch uh drop things. That they have on yeah, the street drop is probably more similar. Yeah, where you you stream a sponsored game and anyone who watches it for a certain amount of time will get an in-game item. Yeah. Um, but yeah, will you accept the, the time. Tony? Will you accept no. the quest? No. Will you finish no, the fight. The it's called it's Sky the Rockets game. Quest. And like, uh, from the thumbnail, I all respect. This game looks like some mobile dog shit, but. Um, <laughs> respectfully respectfully I know nothing about the game but I'm assuming if you're advertising people to stream it to their friends on discord it's not a very good game that's just my my base assumption about the game I feel like most games that have to be advertised through people usually struggle to stand on their own legs unless they're like a huge game that's being advertised you know like you yeah. see, so, like I see I so know. many Twitch streamers, and they have the Raid Shadow Legends box where it's like, yeah. how many people have completed yeah. level three? How many people have bought this much stuff from the store? It's like that never makes me want to play Raid Shadow Legends when I see that shit. Um, but surely they must think it works if people click it. But I just assume uh, there's a lot of yeah, people making new accounts and just playing the tutorial and stuff like that. I don't know. And how many people that actually Sorry. converts to full-time paying players? I have no yeah. idea. We only need one whale per thousand people, though. You want to convert? What? Who? Who? Who made? Who said that? Convert players into payers? Was that Ubisoft? Was that EA? That sounds like something that the Web 3.0 person would say, like a <laughs> cryptocurrency bro would say. Yeah, probably. Stop playing. Start earning. I don't, you don't want to play for fun. You want to play, pay to earn. Let's move on to VR news. Uh, Metal Hellsinger is getting a VR version, which is like 
sort of completely out of nowhere, in my opinion. I did not see this coming at all. I'm not the biggest fan of Metal Hellsinger personally, but I'd be interested to see how this translates into VR. Like, I think that rhythm shooting is already hard enough, but rhythm shooting in VR is going to be very interesting to see. aiming in real life. But yeah, could be cool. Could not be cool. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Uh, in business news, Tony, Embracer Group has officially sold uh, Gearbox Entertainment for a consideration of $460 million US dollars to take to Interactive. Oh, oh put... no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so, did, did Randy not have the money lying around? Take two now owns Gearbox, Borderlands and Tiny Tina's Wonderland, Homeworld, Risk of Rain, Brothers in Arms, and oh, Duke Nukem. Tony, Gear- fucking Duke Nukem has been stuck in Gearbox hell forever, and now Duke Nukem is going to be in Take Two hell forever. Yeah. I, don't I think- care about Homeworld, though. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, man. But so Embracer has kept upcoming Hyperlight Breaker and other notable unannounced games. So they are keeping some of Gearbox. Um, and they're keeping Cryptic Studios, including MMO titles Neverwinter Online and Star Trek Online, and Lost Boys Interactive and Captured Demons. So they are keeping a few studios, but they're selling most of Gearbox uh, to take two. Which, uh, I don't know what's going on in gaming. The giants buying everything and then taking Saudi yeah. billion dollar deals that fall through and yeah. then having to sell I, everything and no one can get funding yeah. and everyone's getting laid off and cancelled. And Yeah, I think I it know. sucks that we have a mega corp ownership and entertainment in general. I mean, I right? thought it was it cool really when Embracer was buying up because I was like, oh, you know, you can have crossovers between different IPs if one IP owns a bunch of different... Like, I was like, oh, Microsoft owns yeah. Activision but, Blizzard now. We can get, like, a new Spyro game or something like imagine, that, right? But imagine a world where everyone just owned, like, like there's lots of smaller entertainment yeah. that is more willing to cooperate. That'd be much better. We never get the crossovers we ever actually want. Like every now and again, like someone who, who cares. I'm just, I'm just. R- when it, whenever it, I see like, like um, games getting bought up by different studios, I'm like, I can't wait for their Smash Bro games to come out where we have, you <laughs> know, Master Chief fighting Spyro, fighting Doom Slayer, yeah. fighting fucking Sea like, Thieves. Man. It's the same. St- it's the same story every time though. Like the, the, the executives or business the business boat people come out and go, This is great for game, we're gonna invest in this, invest that that everyone's like, Oh, this yeah. is brilliant. We're gonna get these games. I'm like, that's not confirmed, you don't well, know that. Like and I, I don't want them to have that control. I, I was talking previously like Epic and Embracer were in like an infinity gauntlet race to acquire yeah. those studios. And both and of them Microsoft. have been both of them have been just cutting all of their studios. Like Epic is they, they sold um what was that sound website? Uh, Bandcamp, uh, not that long ago, didn't oh, they? Oh, yes. And yeah. uh, Embrace has been cutting studios like nobody's business. Um, so this is my problem with like megacorps. Like, they only are willing to like pay for big projects they're going to make money, which just like waters down entertainment. And it was like, yeah. I think lots of smaller, smaller companies are more willing to be like more adaptable, let's say. I just wish we could have... I feel like there should be laws in place to help smaller ones more than bigger ones. Yeah. I don't know what the problem is. Like, I, I don't have like, any ideas, but like, I just feel like th- that w- the world of the world would be a better place. I mean, That's, lots uh, of things would make the world a better place, but... Let's talk about some April Fool's news, because we did have quite a few announcements. And this first one, you sent to me... And I was like, oh, yes. Is this a real product? <laughs> and then I watched the video of them carrying it around. And I was like, okay, this is not a real product. I love the scrolling down. It's just like a giant image. Okay. 
This oh, tra- I thought this was going to be a video of the Lego. This is just a trailer for the Dominions. But yeah, yes, uh, the 250 centimeter tall <laughs> Lego Minion. Yes, it keeps going down to the point where they talk about like how to carry it. That's that's the best part. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is the trailer. I'm so Did you dis- know, okay. disappointed. This is not real. I want a giant minion in my house. Was the was the they had a price? To, how much did they say it was going to cost? I don't know. I didn't check. Do they have like a? Fa- I love how big the instruction manual is, and it's all just putting yellow oh, bricks yeah. together. It, it's brilliant. Um, but yeah, I thought this is a very good April Fool's joke. Um, right oh, up my alley like as someone... a Minions enjoyer. It had 102,000 pieces. Yeah. Just slightly the more 8, than... 8,947 page manual. Slightly more than the uh, Lego Millennium Falcon. Uh, just yeah, a couple more. Yeah. Um, let's so we have... Yeah, uh, the people who people actually thought this might be real, and I was like, no, nah, there's no way. <laughs> I did for like a second, and then I saw them. No, over there, around. people like there's no people were getting very annoyed at the Lego group, and like that, it's, it's not real, guys. It's April Fool. As soon as I saw the image of like the uh, the safety straps or the forklift <laughs> to move the minion, I was like, yeah. okay, this is not real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Pal World did a uh, a fake game where they made uh, Pal World more than just pals. The pal dating sim. Um, I feel like this is not the first time we've got a dating sim uh, from a game on April Fools. We've had no, um, definitely not. Dead by Daylight Hooked on You, which is a uh, killer dating sim. We've What's had the the uh, Sonic, Colonel the Sanders. KFC, I love you. Uh, yeah. The Death of Sonic the Hedgehog came out on uh, April Fools, which I think is more of like a detective point and click like detective, novel, but, visual novel. Um, but it was like set in a high school. I, I can't. Actually no, there was it. another one I was thinking of. What was it? Uh, Overwatch did a uh, Mercy dating oh, yeah. sim. Uh, I that. You date like Mercy or Genji, I think it was. I think it was. It's both, it's both, wasn't it? You could choose. Yes. Uh, yeah, Bing Chill It. But yeah, I thought this was uh, very funny, and I, I think they know exactly what they're doing. Pocket Pair knows <laughs> exactly what they are doing. Um, with the uh, with the love and yeah, uh, in there as well. Um, speaking of uh, power, they actually did release a real patch for the game as well. Um, so they released version 0.2.6, uh, which added a new raid boss, uh, Bella Noir, and uh, actually improved a lot of the building. Um, so you can now uh, now allow disallow certain work. F- for bowel, uh, base pals at the monitoring stand, which is so fucking useful because constantly I would throw down a pound and I'm like, I want you to go and mine some rock and they would run and they would start cutting down trees and I'm like, please, every time, stop cutting down trees. I want you to go and do this other thing. Um, chest filters have been nice. added, which lets you select items types to allow or disallow inside chests. Uh, Kelpsy can now produce pal fluids at the ranch. When aiming a sphere, it will now display how many of the target PAL has already been captured, which is super useful. Um, yeah, that's useful. You can now connect stairs facing upwards, thank God. I tried building oh, stairs yeah. in the early version of the game, and I was like, this is so yeah. annoying. Uh, yeah. Fixed assignments remain fixed even after a bad event occurs, and eggs now have a small chance to produce alpha PALs. That, but there's, there is a bunch of other like UI and stuff that they fixed so it's like a very nice quality of life patch mixed with a new raid so it's cool to see that the developers of pal world are still working on the game i think it's still like fucking insanely popular like people are still oh, coming in and buying this game and playing it yeah so it is oh, still right, okay. quite popular it's just that. not the same like mega hit it was in, in oh no right but i thought everyone, everyone who was gonna buy it already bought it. i didn't know it was well 
I'm just doing what the uh, the the guys who made the game said. They're like, "Oh, just go and play something else while you wait for yep. the content updates yep. to come." You know, so I'm like, well, yeah, I'll just Absolutely. go off and play Correct. something else until the next big content update hits, and I can come back and play some more of the game. Um, we also had the Virtual Boy Pro for Nintendo Switch, which looks like um, the Nintendo Labo, but with um, fake VR games added to it. So we have Link's Korok Catcher, which is uh, you shooting balloons with size. You have Super Mario Home Run, which is like an AR Mario running around. You have Animal Crossing, where you can decorate your house. Um, oh, there was this Tom, this Tom Nook guy who starts speaking in like Animal Crossing uh. language in the VR headset. And then Luigi's Mansion is just vacuum cleaning, which is very accurate to Luigi's yeah. Mansion. Um, also, I thought the Mario Kart game was funny, considering like the videos of at people driving around in like cyber trucks with Apple Vision Pros on their heads. Um, I thought this was quite funny. <laughs> it's weird to see like Nintendo does have like a good sense of humor generally, but then when it comes to a lot of like community like stuff, they're like, no, we we don't yeah. want to we don't want to mess around with anything like this. It's just it can be strange sometimes. They're like the tone the company sets. Um, I think just different branches that are problematic. Yeah. I think the ones that are designed for fun are more fun. Uh, also, uh, the Pokemon uh, company announced the Pokemon Sleep Championship Tournament. Uh, if you don't know, <laughs> okay. Pokemon Sleep is the game that you play while going to sleep. Um, it's a real game, <laughs> but they decided yes, that uh, <laughs> why don't we have a Pokemon Sleep Tournament, which sounds like a fucking ridiculous idea if it won an <laughs> April Fool's joke, um, which I think is uh, very funny. Yeah, I like that one. That one's very good. Oh, he's having a bad dream. He's having a bad dream. He's cap ca capturing a Haunter. Um, then we have uh, Dead by Daylight came with My Little Oni. The, uh, okay. Interesting. The, the small survivor giant killer uh, variant of the game, which I think was actually a playable thing in the game. I didn't try it out myself, but I think uh, it's very funny that they added this. That was available for a limited time. They should they should add a giant killer. I guess that's a, that's a problem. No, they should add a small killer. No, a bunch of small killers small... called gremlins. They already added Chucky. They didn't add gremlins. I'm still. They need multiple oh, okay. small killers. Well, okay, gremlins first, it, then giant. It's like, just a unique giant. It's killer. just like Scream. There's always multiple killers. Uh, oh no! But I've got it. Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters. The Stay Puff mascot. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Dave the Diver. Speaking of dating sims, Dave the Diver put up a uh, dating sim that you play through a VR device, which I was like, yeah. Okay. They, they know their target audience, you know. <laughs> I knew exactly what the target audience was. Dating sims, VR headsets, they've got them. Uh, then we also have, oh, uh, Dusk put out, um, so Dusk recently got the HD upgrade and for, uh, April Fool's they released, uh, Cardboard Dusk, the, uh, demake of Dusk to go even oh, the <laughs> further. <laughs> and funny. part of me was like, this is a hilarious joke. And then part of me is like, they're going to fucking make this, aren't they? Like... Seeing how like Dusk HD started out like, oh, it'd be cool if we could make like high quality versions of some of the weapons. And they're like, oh yeah, by the way, we remade the entire game in HD. I saw on Twitter, Dave Oshry started posting like a image of a bunch of cardboard of Dusk like enemies that have been remade into cardboard that weren't in this trailer. And I was like, oh no, they're actually working on it sort of thing. So <laughs> we'll have to wait and see if this is just a joke yeah. and they're just making those for fun. But I think it would be pretty fun to see like a cardboard version of Dusk. That would be pretty funny. Um, then we have RuneScape uh, 3 added the bench sitting skill. I saw RuneScape <laughs> and I asked my RuneScape friends, 
Uh, oh, have you done the bench skipping update? To which they said, that's a RuneScape 3 thing. That's not an old school RuneScape. So I've learned this is in RuneScape 3, not in the good RuneScape. But it's I still it's funny hard, nevertheless. It's hard, yeah, it's hard to tell which is in which as an outsider. Yeah. But yeah. It would be it would have been a new skill and it would even have a uh, a level progress and a skill uh, cape. So you get the bench sitting cape, which I think would be hilarious. And um, the title, the you, bench you guys... warmer, would yeah, be the level ninety nine title. You, wouldn't they? Have, I think they might have some. I think they would have bossing problems with this though. I think it would Here's be, a question uh... for you, Tony. Did you play the yep. poisonous potato update uh, for Minecraft? I, don't know if you I did this not out. play it, but I, have, I saw um, a lot on it. It was actually very creative. I, I thought what? it was very good. So they replaced a lot of the overworld with like poisonous variants of no. lots of. No, it's a new dimension, like an aether potato but, dimension. Yeah, like put the poison <laughs> dimension sort of thing, right? Yes. And there's, there's even like a, a, like a boss that I think has the best mechanics of any Minecraft boss ever. Why is that? Well, she has phases, right? As she has like a cool idea. So you have like, it's like you potato you land boss. and like poison yeah. rain coming down from the sky and stuff. It's like also it's like it's like this poison liquid. Like obviously the rain. There's also like literally like the there's poison water. It's like I think it's like the first liquid since they added like lava and water. So. But yeah, I think, like, um, they actually added a lot of stuff, which is kind of. I thought like said it's, like, it's kind of like a cool test bed. Like they just like make something quick and put it out there and they like, see what well, sticks. Uh, from so I know when this came out, a lot of people. Oh, potato golem! Um, yeah. When this came out, people were like, "How come every Minecraft update they add like one mob?" And then every <laughs> April Fools are like, "Oh, we made a completely new game as an April Fools joke." It's like. The level because of because one's very detail one's polished and one's to. not. I know somebody said like a, like this is a rumor speculation, but apparently, um, ever since Microsoft bought Minecraft from Notch, they know that the Minecraft is sort of like a Minecraft. It's sort of like a lightning in a bottle thing, and they're really scared yeah. to change anything about the formula. So they're really scared to make big changes to the game. So the yeah. reason that the April, like a lot of the developers would love to put loads of stuff into Minecraft, but they're scared yep. that if they made like sweeping changes to the game, it would completely polarize the player base. Um, so when April I, Fools yeah. comes out, the developers can like flex their that. creative muscles and just go, let's go yeah. crazy. Um, I think even if it wasn't an April Fools thing, I think the idea of having this like, oh, let's just do some crazy stuff and see what players think, I think is a really cool. Like, and it's like, not you don't you don't have to commit to anything. I think it's like a good idea. I think that makes a lot of sense. Oh, we yeah, a, I uh... genuinely would want the potato dimension in Minecraft. I know it's a meme, but I I think it would actually be kind of cool. Maybe no, not all of it. We but... had an April Fool's joke here from uh, Mega sixty four. Um, after thirteen years in the making, Doug Huggum is finally here. Doug Huggum <laughs> is the first kindness type game. A first-person politeness simulator that promotes positively and teaches high-octane morality, um, which I think is hilarious. what's high-octane morality? Is that morality like go, when you're going really fast? Fast-paced morality, yeah. Right. Um, but I thought this is hilarious. It's obviously like the positive version of Duke Nukem, basically. Yeah. Which, yeah. And it's it's a real playable thing. Like, I played it in the browser previously, but it takes a while to load. And you can download it and play it locally on your PC, but I have not done that. Maybe I should check out Doug Huggum. Maybe we should do a spotlight on it. I don't know how I don't know how much That's of the game there cool. actually is, though, to be fair. I just kind of walked around a little bit on it when I played it in the browser. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. Speaking of April Fool's jokes that are not April Fool's jokes... Uh, Bug Snacks create uh, Young Horses, also the developer of uh, Octodad Deadliest Catch, um, announced a Bug Snacks card game on April 1st that was also a real Bug Snacks card game that they actually released onto Kickstarter. Um, so oh. it, 
If you're interested in playing a Bug Snacks card game, it now exists and you can play it. Well, that's kind um, of a, yeah, that's interesting, actually. Yeah. But yeah. That's the end of April Fool's, Tony. Uh, I think we've gone long enough for this week, so we will look at the, <laughs> okay. tri- we will look at the Triple I games next week when I can actually go through them all and give you more information about them. Uh, but I'm excited to talk about some of the stuff. Yeah, One... It's a bit breaking news right now. But, yeah, it's yeah. breaking news. One spoiler I did see is... Okay, I'm going to spoil it now because <laughs> you will have watched spoilers. it anyway. I love Slay the Spire. And they've just <laughs> announced Slay the Spire 2. And I'm so fucking excited for that. I cannot... Yep. Slay the Spire is one of my most played games of all time. Like, I love Slay the Spire. So I'm so excited for Slay the Spire 2. I cannot wait for that. But yeah, we will see you uh, next time. Uh, you can check us out. Uh, and every at... YouTube.com at everything in between podcasts. If you want to check out the VODs, twitch.tv slash scorn if you want to watch us live, and at scorn2000 on Twitter if you want to follow me there for some reason. Shows.cast.com dash uh, or forward slash everything dash in between dash podcast. If you want to listen to the audio versions, there will be a link to the Apple Podcast and Spotify versions of the podcast. And we will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.